Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let's try a problem and see if we can solve it. So what we have here is steam at 40 degrees Celsius that's condensing on the outside of a 5 meter long by 3 centimeter diameter thin horizontal copper tube that's carrying some cooling water. So this cooling water is cooling the steam which is causing it to condense. Okay. And we're trying to find the rate of condensation of that steam. It gives us various properties for water. It also gives us the enthalpy of vaporization, which we're going to need to be able to solve this problem. So let's draw our picture. So we have our pipe right here. We have water that's condensing on the outside, and we have cooling water going through it. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to draw my control volume right here around the pipe, just the pipe itself. And that pipe is in a steady state. So it's gaining heat, yes, but that heat is not building up. It's going from one temperature to the other and it's staying constant, which is gonna help us out. So let's go ahead and write out our energy balance. So we have the change in energy in my system with time is equal to the energy out minus the energy in. And here is the thing. I've written my control volume around that pipe. And we already know that this is a steady state system. So since this is a rate right here, that guy is going to be equal to zero because it's at steady state. It doesn't say that my temperatures are changing with time, just that my temperature changes from one side of the pipe to the other side of the pipe. Now, why am I dealing with rates and not just total values? Well, one, it says rate in the problem statement right here, but also it gives me a velocity and a diameter right here, which is what I'm going to need to find the volume flow rate and be able to solve this problem. Because I'll need the mass flow rate, and that's what's going to give it to me. Okay, now if I know that my rate of energy change for my control volume is zero, that means that the energy going out of my system is equal to the energy going into my system. That's good. That means that the energy being lost to the condensing steam is equal to the energy change from one side to the other of my pipe. So we can use that to solve this problem. So in this case, I'm going to say the energy out um, over time is equal to my condensation rate. And the energy in over time is equal to the change in the um, energy of my water as it goes from one side to the other of the pipe. Well, that's so we can figure out what those two values would be. So for my water, it's pretty easy. It doesn't say anything about kinetic energy changing. It doesn't say that it goes up or down a hill, so there's no potential energy changes. So that only leaves enthalpy. Remember, if it's flowing, you probably need enthalpy. And so I'm going to get that my mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy from one side to the other, from here to here. This is two, that's one. Um, it's going to be equal to how much heat that water is gaining in this case, it's gaining from the um, con condensing steam. Now, in this case, it does not say you have to take into account the variation of um, specific heats. So we're just going to use a constant specific heat right here to help us find out our enthalpy. Now, we know what the temperatures are. We know what our specific heat is. We don't know what our mass flow rate is. So that's the next thing we're going to need to find. The mass flow rate for water or for most fluids, you can find it by knowing the density, the velocity, and the area. Velocity was given in the problem statement. Diameter was given right here, which gives us the area. And density was also given in the problem statement. So using that, I can get my overall mass flow rate of 1.409 kilograms per second. And just so you know, this diameter right here, we're using the whole pi d squared over 4 equation to get my area. And I would need to convert that from being 3 centimeters to being 0 0.03 meters to make sure I have the right units at the end. Okay, so this right here is the mass flow rate of my water. I have everything else. I can plug it in and get my condensate, or sorry, my, um, the change in enthalpy of my water over time, which comes out to be 44.17 kilowatts. I also know that that would be equal to my condensation rate because... They're the same value. E out is equal to E in. So, if I want to find out how much steam is condensing over time, 
I will need to divide my condensation rate, which I know, by the enthalpy vaporization because this will go from energy to mass. You can see right here, kilojoules per kilogram. It says how much energy it takes to condense a particular amount of mass or vice versa to vaporize it. So I plug that in and I get that the amount of mass that's being condensed is 0 0.0184 kilograms per second. And that's it. That is the answer to my problem. So hopefully this helps you and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.